Ah, it's Friday. <sighs> my heart's racing. I have my computer pulled up with a different, like, version of the scripture. I have points because that's how unprepared I feel for this week's Faith Wrestle Friday. I have been wrestling with Faith Wrestle Friday for a while at this point. And so here I am, say a prayer. Who knows what he's going to say? Um, I know a lot of you could tell by my last couple of Faith Wrestle Fridays that I was going, I was wrestling with something. Um, I mean, nothing like bad. It was just like a part of my faith journey, right? And, um, uh, I am a messy, messy Christian. Messy. I have big, bright tattoos on my arms that you can see. I curse historically a lot. Um, I say things that make a lot of Christians uncomfortable. Yeah, I make I say things that make a lot of people uncomfortable. <laughs> it's kind of my thing. I am a messy, messy, messy Christian. And I, the last couple weeks, um, have been really looking at myself and my own faith walk and my growth. And because I'm doing Faith Wrestle Friday, I'm teaching out of the Bible. I'm getting more and more speaking engagements in ministry. And as scripture says, teachers will be held to a higher standard. They will be judged more harshly, which that's a whole future Faith Wrestle Friday because I have, I have, a, I have a nitpick thing to, about that too, but that's not what this one's about. And so I um, was asked to examine some of my life a couple weeks ago. And I have spent more time in scripture than I probably have since I wrote that date in my Bible when I got baptized um, several years ago at this point, I have prayed more than I have. I've cried and been frustrated more than I ever have. And I sought more wise counsel than I ever have. I met with several of my pastors. I met with like what people are are telling me or my board of directors then that I will definitely need as my ministry grows. And I, I came up with a couple things. I didn't even know what to Google. Cause I, I even told Michelle, like, I don't know what scripture I need to teach on. Like there's so many pieces of this story that I want to teach on and I'm not quite ready yet to share them. I don't think, but like what I know for sure is that like, I'm a, I'm a fucking mess. And so are you. Number one, that's why I need Jesus. Number two, I won't apologize for it. And number three, I will not wrap this up in a pretty bow so that it will be easier to accept. I won't. And like this, this battle kind of ignited some of my Christian wounds for sure. Like, and I, well, I hope churches are talking about this, but at my church, like we even have a class called church ICU, church ICU, like for people who have been wounded by people in religion and faith and things like that. And some of my Christian wounds are people who really shoved legalistic black and white faith down my throat for a really long time. And the more I got to know Jesus, it just didn't add up. And so the last couple weeks, like first I want to share like my notes before I like found the scripture that I feel like maybe relates to it. I don't know if it does, to be honest, but like I'm a messy Christian and so are you. And so we need to surround ourselves with people 
who love our messy and who also challenge our mess with love. I needed to be called out on this piece of my life. I needed to be asked to look at it, especially if I want to speak in ministry, especially if I want to advance the kingdom. I needed this wrestle so badly and I'm so grateful for it. But surrounding yourself with people who love you for who you are and who love you in the truth and challenge of what is God's way and God's truth. Because it is not easy. If faith was easy, I think we'd all be doing it. It's not. Seeking support, like I I told Pastor Judy, I was like, I feel like I should be living up here at this point. I have met with so many of you and um, lots of different personalities. Some of them knew a ton about my story. Some of them didn't. That is one of the blessings of going to a huge church. I, I have a whole team of pastors who I can seek support from. The seeking support and different support is important in your faith walk. That ultimately it comes down to God's word and for me, this is something that I feel like needs a little bit of, it, it's beyond opening his word. This is it. This is the be all end all. It's also Googling it. It's also looking at different translations. It's also looking at the notes in different translations. It's talking about it with your friends in faith. It's talking about it with your friends outside of faith. Like you seek his word because that is truth. And you seek all of the other outside sources of it to help you better understand it. I always tell people when people ask me how I came to my faith at such a late age and after such trauma in reality, I could not start in the Bible. I didn't grow up in Sunday school. I didn't understand the Bible. So I started with devotionals. I started with the devotion and then I would read the scripture because the devotion helps me understand the scripture. And now that I'm further into my faith, I start with the scripture and then read the devotional. Or I start with the scripture and I look it up in multiple translations and then the notes to help me understand the context because that's so important in understanding God's word. Know your truth. Know your truth. And know his truth. Because when you know your truth and his truth, you honor yours. So when I was trying to figure out what scripture I needed to teach on, Romans 8.28 popped up, which is probably one of the most used scriptures ever. And the voice 8.28, Romans 8.28 says, we are confident that God is able to orchestrate everything to work towards something good and beautiful when we love him and accept his invitation to live according to his plan. And I, like, it didn't hit me like that was explaining what I was going through. And so, of course, when you read scripture, you need to read the scriptures above it and below it, like the verses above and below to help you get context, if if not the notes. And so the, I went, God was like, go above. 27, don't you know that he who pursues and explores the human heart intimately knows that the spirit's mind because he pleads to God for his saints to align their lives with the will of God. 28, we are confident that God is able to orchestrate everything to work towards something good and beautiful when we love him and accept his invitation to live according to his plan. The word that got me was that don't you know that he who pursues and explores the human heart, like he's always wooing us and pursuing us and he knows us, like he knows your authentic truth and who you are meant to live and be as on this earth. But then what really got me was he pleads to God, he meaning the Holy Spirit, from what I understand in my notes from my other translations, he pleads to God for his saints to align their lives with the will of God. A line is what stuck out for me. Because in this walk that I just went through, this wrestle, when I was asked to examine a part of my life and to see if it matched up with scripture and if I needed to change it, from what, one of my friends, one of my mentors, I didn't find what they wanted me to find. I found more of my truth. I found that he knows me and he made me this messy, messy, a lot 
girl. And it is aligned with his truth. Tattoos and curse words and saying words that people don't want to hear, like shame. He is working in me. He knows my heart intimately. And his spirit is in me, aligning my life with his will. I have no idea if this makes sense at this point. I know that I'm being kind of vague, but I, I mean, you guys know me well enough to kind of know, like, I'm a Christian and I'm teaching out of the Bible. And the F word is one of my favorite words. Take your guesses as to what I was asked to examine, right? And I there's like, probably five faith wrestle Fridays I could do on what this wrestle was for me because it was so incredible and I'm so grateful for it as hard as it was because we are confident that God is able to orchestrate everything to work towards something good and beautiful when we love him and accept his invitation to live according to his plan so my question to you today Do you know your truth? Have you found it in God's truth? And what work do you need to do to live in that alignment? Because it's already there. It's already there. And even when we have to let go of stuff we don't want to let go of, which I did, we can trust that it is for his good plan.